The movie opens in the year 1993, at Simeon Research Hospital, where Dr. Florence Weaver is documenting a video log about a person named Gabriel, who has become increasingly unstable. Suddenly, an alert goes off indicating that Gabriel has escaped and is causing chaos. Gabriel brutally murders several hospital staff members in a locked room. Eventually, Weaver and her colleagues are able to capture and restrain Gabriel, but when they address him, they catch a glimpse of a creature, screeching at them from a pair of child's legs. Gabriel also manipulates the lights and uses a radio to project his thoughts. Determined, Weaver declares, it's time to remove the cancer. Madison Mitchell is currently pregnant for the fourth time after experiencing three heartbreaking miscarriages. She lives in Seattle with her husband, Derek, who is both abusive and unhelpful. Derek unjustly blames Madison for the loss of their previous babies, and their argument escalates to a point where he violently throws her against the wall, causing her head to crack open. Derek quickly tries to apologize, but Madison locks herself in her bedroom. Later that night, Madison sleeps while Derek hears a noise in the living room. He finds a shadowy figure appearing to watch TV, but when he turns on the lights, nobody is there anymore. Derek is stalked by the figure until it appears to stab him and then mangle his body. Madison goes downstairs to see what is going on, and she finds Derek's body. The dark figure then appears to chase Madison through the house until she gets knocked unconscious. Paramedics and law enforcement personnel arrive at the Mitchell residence and rush Madison to the hospital. Her sister, Sydney Lake, meets her there and reveals that Madison was attacked and that Derek, her abuser, is now deceased. To make matters worse, Madison has also lost her baby again, causing her to cry out in anguish. Later, Detective Kekko Shaw visits Matt Ison's room and speaks with Sydney. Sydney explains to Shaw that Derek had kept her away from Madison, so she was unaware of the abuse Madison had endured, or the fact that she had suffered previous miscarriages. Detective Regina Moss, Shaw's partner, suspects that Madison may have killed Derek herself due to the abuse. After a two-week stay at the hospital, Madison finally returns home and tries to get her life back to normal. She hears noises and sees what looks like a shadowy figure outside on the street from her window. When Sydney comes to visit later, Madison tells her something that she never knew. Before Sydney was born, Madison was adopted by Mr. and Mrs. Lake when she was about nine years old. An unnamed woman is acting as a tour guide for a group of people checking an underground exhibit. As the group departs, she finds herself alone and becomes the target of the mysterious figure. She is taken to an attic where she is bound and held captive by the assailant. At night, Madison tries to do laundry, but she is startled when she sees what looks like Weaver, yelling at her asking why she is in her house. Madison then sees the figure approaching Weaver. She remains frozen in place while she witnesses the figure getting closer to Weaver and through a staticky television. He utters the words it's time to cut out the cancer. Weaver knows it's Gabriel, and he proceeds to grab a pointy trophy to stab Weaver to death. Shaw and Moss later go to Weaver's home and investigate the crime scene, finding a picture of a girl named Emily May and then taking Weaver's patient records as evidence. Dr. Victor Fields, a former colleague of Weaver's, is horrified upon overhearing the news of her death due to the circumstances surrounding it. Later that night, as Fields settles into bed, Gabriel stalks him as well. Madison attempts to go to sleep but is startled to see Fields in the bed beside her, only to witness Gabriel violently stabbing him in the face and neck with his weapon. Madison and Sydney then approach Shaw and Moss with a detailed description of Matt Ison's vision. They locate the apartment building mentioned in the vision, but Shaw and Moss are forced to go door to door on the top floor until they finally find Fields' room and discover his lifeless body. Back at the police station, Madison struggles to identify the killer, only able to provide a terrifying description of Gabriel's monstrous face. As Madison retreats to the bathroom, she receives a call from an unknown number, which turns out to be Gabriel himself. He addresses her as Emily, which is her real name, and Madison responds using Gabriel's name, indicating that she remembers him. Madison and Sydney go to the home of their mother Jean, who becomes mortified when Madison brings up Gabriel. She gives the ladies a videotape of Madison as a child who appears to be talking to Gabriel, as if he were an imaginary friend. Another tape shows Madison on Christmas talking to Gabriel on the phone and asking him not to kill baby Sydney. Shaw does more research into Weaver's work and learns of another colleague, Dr. John Gregory, involved in procedures with Gabriel. Sure enough, Madison sees herself in Gregory's home just before Gabriel gets to him. Shaw finds Gregory's address and attempts to find him, but he ends up too late and discovers Gregory's corpse in a bathtub full of blood. Madison still finds herself seeing the scene in the bathroom as Shaw enters and tries to warn him as Gabriel appears. He nearly kills Shaw but he shoots at Gabriel, who proceeds to flee through the fire escape. Shaw chases him and ends up in a dark alley where Gabriel nearly gets him again, but the villain ends up escaping. Shaw and Moss meet with Madison and Sydney again, plus a hypnotherapist, as they try to get Madison to remember her childhood connection to Gabriel. 
Madison remembers that Gabriel would speak to her as a child and do bad things that she would get blamed for, even going as far as to get Madison to hold a knife and nearly kill her adoptive parents. Madison starts freaking out saying that Gabriel was always making her take the blame, but she is snapped out of it. Moments later, the captured woman breaks free from her bonds, but as she tries walking away, she falls through the floor and lands in Matt Ison's living room. The woman is taken to the hospital, and Madison is taken into custody. Shaw and Moss interrogate Madison, where she gets anger she yells and causes all the lights to break. Shaw's phone then rings, and Gabriel's voice speaks to taunt them. Sydney conducts research on Simeon Hospital and discovers that it is now an abandoned building. She breaks into the facility and manages to find tapes related to Emily May. She brings them back home to watch with Jean. The tapes reveal a shocking truth, Matt Ison's biological mother, Serena May, had given up her children to the hospital at the age of 15, as they were the result of rape. As they watch the tapes, they see Weaver and her team conducting tests on Madison, who claims that Gabriel speaks to her. The camera reveals the truth. Gabriel is actually a parasitic twin, similar to a teratoma tumor, attached to the back of Matt Ison's head. Weaver and her team had surgically removed part of Gabriel from Matt Ison's body, but left the rest behind out of fear that removing it completely would harm Madison. This dormant part of Gabriel was able to project images into Matt Ison's mind, making her believe that she was living a normal life when, in fact, Gabriel was taking control of her body and committing the murders. Meanwhile, Shaw learns that the captive tour guide is actually Serena, Matt Ison's biological mother. Madison is in a prison cell with other women, who quickly antagonize her, and two of them begin to assault her. Gabriel proceeds to take over, revealing his hideous face from the back of Matt Ison's head. Gabriel slaughters all the women in the cell and breaks free when a guard comes by to stop him. He rampages through the station and murders other guards, incapacitating Moss, before recovering his weapon. Sydney meets up with Shaw as they both realize that Gabriel is going after Serena at the hospital. Once they get there, Gabriel makes it to Serena's room, where he hurls his weapon at Shaw's chest and wounds him, while Sydney tries to stop Gabriel from killing Serena. He hurls a hospital bed at her and appears to crush her, as she tries telling Madison that Gabriel was responsible for her miscarriages. Gabriel shoots Sydney in the head before going after Serena. She apologizes to Gabriel for giving him up, but this had no effect on him and he still kills her, saying that it's her fault that he's a monster. Then Matt Ison's voice calls out saying that Gabriel was always a monster. It turns out that she has now learned his mind manipulation skills and forced Gabriel to see what she wants, meaning he didn't kill Sydney or Serena. Madison regains control of her mind and body and creates a prison for Gabriel to be trapped in, never to allow him to hurt anybody ever again. All he can do is scream in futility from behind bars. She rushes to Sydney's side, helping to remove the hospital bed that Gabriel had thrown at her. They share an emotional embrace with Madison expressing that Sydney has always been her true sister. Subscribe to our channel if you want more videos like this and share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and turn on the notifications to keep yourself updated. Take care and I will see you in the next movie recap.